Okay, here we are, 21 days after we first built this compost pile. As you can see, it's smaller in mass than when we first built it and probably even from seven days ago. I want to back up for one second and talk about 21 days. That's three cycles of seven, and it's not really an arbitrary movement of time. In the world of the living, things actually work in time stamps. And so three cycles of seven has taken us to a point where biologically this compost pile is shifting. It's moving from what we would call a thermophilic mass, a mass where it gives off a lot of heat, to now a sort of ecosystem that is mesophilically dominated and will actually have a more diverse array of microorganisms that are occupying the pile. But how do we know that it's moved into this, this new transition? Let's look at the temperatures. I have the temperature measured at the lowest point of the pile, and I can see that it says 110 degrees. So this is definitely a lot less heat that it was generating uh, about five days ago. Uh, but let's look at what it would be in the middle of the compost pile. So I'm moving the thermometer up just a bit, and we'll see what will register as we move higher. I'm waiting for the temperature to move down, and I can see that from this perspective, it's about 108. So just a little less than 110, which would either signify that it doesn't have enough water, or the, the oxygen is lacking. Remember, when we turn the compost pile, we infuse it with more oxygen and that creates a more heat stamp. But again, we should be mindful that we're at the 21 day mark and this is the beginning of a really cool transition in the compost pile. Now we're going to take it out and do the third reading, which again to remind you, we do a reading that's at the bottom of the compost pile, at the middle of the compost pile, and now at the top of the compost pile. That tells us sort of the profile of how deep the oxygen and the air is penetrating into the pile. And also at the core, the middle temperature, will sort of tell us what's happening at the heart of the compost pile. Now I'm taking a measure from the very top of the compost pile, and I can see that it is about 98 degrees Fahrenheit. So much cooler than the core of the compost pile and the very bottom of the compost pile. This is definitely signifying to me that we need to turn it, we need to mix it, but it's where I would expect the temperature to be at the 21st day mark. Now we need to look and sort of investigate the pile a little bit just to make sure that the moisture content is where we want it to be. We may add a little bit more as we turn the pile, but it should be at a different state a different stage. So as I'm pulling the material out, I can see that it's shimmering with moisture. I'm going to give it a smell. Mm, it has a really nice sweet smell. Nothing putrid, nothing off smelling. This means that it's moving towards the mesophilic stage that I was talking about. And the sweet smell comes from something called atinomyces. They give off this wonderful aroma that for some reason, as human beings, we really love this smell. The other reason why I can tell it's transforming is I can move it around in my fingers and it's starting to change color. And as you can see on my fingertips, there's the beginning of humus formation. It'll continue to do that if we're taking good care and monitoring the pile. And in another month's time or so, we'll have some finished compost. And so here we are at uh, 21 days, and we are going to be turning the compost pile again. And as you can see, the colors have really changed over the last seven days. It's starting to turn into a deep brown, and it's retaining more of its moisture. It's important, though, at this stage to still pay attention to the moisture content of the pile. But as things have cooled down, we were keeping a constant 140, 135 degrees. Now the temperatures are starting to linger around 100 degrees. By turning it, we may get another spike in temperature going up to 130. 
But because a lot of our heat loving microorganisms are either moving away from the compost pile or changing their metabolism, we um, will notice that the temperature will not climb as high as it has in the past. At this stage, you can add just a little bit of water, but be careful not to add too much. Just a little sprinkling on the bottom just to give extra hydration because as you can see, there's some brown pockets. And now look, we have some fruiting bodies of some inky cap mushrooms that like to grow on manures. And it's illustrative of the fact that the temperatures are starting to decline in the compost pile and that we are entering a new phase where a lot of the carbohydrates, the browns, are going to be starting to decompose and be the major scaffolding and foundation for the humus. So this point of turning the compost pile, you may notice that we're not taking as much care into putting the outside layer inside and the inside on the outside, the compost pile is actually starting to move to a kind of uniformity or what you could call a homeostasis where the moisture levels are almost uniform throughout the pile. I say almost and that's why we're adding a little more moisture at this point. But when you're making your compost pile, this is where sort of the art of composting comes in. You'll need to ascertain whether or not it needs a little extra moisture. You want it to glisten like it does on the top right now, but be careful not to add too much for that will bog down and limit the oxygen in the compost pile. Again, it's really important to pay attention to form. Make sure that the compost pile is even dimensions. And as you can see, as we get more into the core of the compost pile, Definitely, there's a uniformity of color. It's kind of an amazing thing, isn't it? Where is all that color gone? I don't know, but I always find it endlessly fascinating. You can see a little bit of the steam rising from the compost pile. This is because it had the sort of materials collapsed on themselves as they're decomposing. And there was a lack of air, a lack of oxygen. So as we're opening it up, adding more oxygen, more decomposition can happen. But this stage, the 21st day, is a really important balance juncture. You want to make sure that you take care and time to aerate the pile, make sure that the water content is appropriate, and to shape it. Because the next time we open this compost pile, if we've done everything right, it will transform into this crumb and the beginning of really wonderful humus formation. As you can see, when you're moving the material, it tends to get matted down. So it's important to fluff it up with the pitchfork, creating a certain kind of porosity. And as you're, <laughs> that was a good illustration. You see how you create the porosity and the steam rises from that. Think of this stage as the beginning of building those wonderful humic molecules. This is the heart of making really good compost. It's what holds on to the nutrients until your plants need them. The reason why you pay attention to form is the mass of the pile needs to be true in the sense that it's a living being and it needs to hold on to its moisture. It needs to hold on to the water content. If the pile is too big proportionately to its height, it will lose the moisture. In the middle of the pile, we're not needing to add any water because the moisture is just perfect. It's an interesting thing, actually. When you first build a compost pile, you have to add quite a bit of water. But at this stage, and as we progress further, the water that you added is almost saved or it's converted into this humus. It's reached a different kind of stage, not needing water and sort of turning into an earthly matter. Maybe that's why it's brown in color. We're encountering just a little bit of dry stuff you can see by the different color. So we'll add a little more moisture. 
as the pile matures into this humic formation stage, the next thing that will happen is our friends, the earthworms and other invertebrates will move into the compost pile, eating their way through the fungus and microbes that are populating it now. You won't find earthworms or any of those bugs at this stage because it's still a little too warm for them. But as soon as the pile drops below 100 degrees, they will populate and begin to transform the compost into its final stage. As we reach the bottom of the pile, the weight of the mass has collapsed everything even further. So before you move it, it's good to shake it in the air, sort of loosen up the things that have gotten matted down. Because again, the reason why we're turning the compost pile is to introduce more air and help the microbes decompose the pile further. Also by doing this sort of aeration, it gives you a good chance to see if the moisture content is at a good stage. You can still see it glistening in the light and maybe some steam rising. This means that the moisture is just about right. Unfortunately, we can't show you the aroma that's coming from the compost pile, but it should be a sweet, earthy smell. If it is a putrid smell or an ammonia smell, it means that you got your compost pile too wet. If that were the case, if it has a putrid smell to it or an ammonia smell, it means that your recipe was a little bit off. You didn't add quite enough carbon. At this stage, what you could do is add a little more straw or a little more carbon if that was in your recipe. Give it a lot of moisture and that will help correct a recipe that has too much nitrogen or too much green. Interestingly, at this stage, after about 28 days or so, you can't correct the recipe any further. But up until about 28 days, you can correct the recipe. Compost can be very forgiving. Again, look at, at the bottom of the pile. You remember our temperature readings and they were showing that there was a lot of compaction down at the bottom because the temperatures were not very high. The moisture content is perfect, but there was no oxygen and thus no heat was being generated by the microorganisms. An interesting turning technique that you can employ is pile the material in the middle of the compost pile and then move it to the edge. The reason why you can do that at this stage is because most of the material is rather uniform and you can just pile it on top of itself and then move it to the outside edges. It's important to pay attention to the ergonomics of turning a compost pile and make sure that you're bending your knees and using your arms and legs to pick up the mass. At this point, I should mention that if you want a certain yardage of compost, you need to take into consideration how much the compost pile shrinks. By general measure, it shrinks about 30 to 40% once you are done with the entire process. So as you can see from this compost pile, it has shrunk from its original construction. There's a way in which you can do a mathematical calculation and calculate the yardage of material you are creating and then factor in about a 30% loss. That way you can ensure that you have enough compost for your farm. If you can see, there's some white mold that's showing itself and that is what's breaking down the browns. The mushrooms are excellent at breaking down carbohydrates. Again, like it always happens, or it always seems to happen, our estimation as to the, what the dimensions will be uh, need to be corrected. So here we are creating an extension. It's always better to build your turned pile too small and add more room than to build it too big. And again, if you schedule time to turn your compost pile, it doesn't take very much time. 
maybe 45 minutes. You may notice that it's actually taller than when we started out. And this is because the person that's turning the compost pile is taking good care in aerating and providing some porosity for the air to move through the compost pile. If you use your imagination, how the air flows in a compost pile is what they call the chimney effect. The fresh air comes from the bottom of the compost pile, travels up through the pile, and exits the very top. At some point, when you're making compost, it starts to look kind of delicious. We've now completed the third turning, and we will not be having a video of the fourth turning of the compost pile. Uh, because it looks very similar to uh, the third turning of the compost pile. The fifth video will be at eight weeks of the life of the compost pile.